Ready. Restart. Let's go. Three, two, one, Tetris. And we're off with round zero. We have SQR from Japan. We have Ethan from, shoot, I think California. I don't have his player profile in front of me. Yeah. He uh, he's on Twitch as F Symbols, so you may know him from Twitch. F underscore. F underscore. That's why I paused. F yeah. symbols. And we don't mean we're trying to underscore symbols. There's an underscore between F and symbols. All right, so both players uh, about to get the 10 lines. No Tetris yet, so. SQR set up. He's a little deeper into this drought, but he gets through it with a boom Tetris for SQR. And uh, yeah, this seed starting off with a little bit of a drought for both players, so. Yeah, there's something really satisfying about getting that first Tetris, seeing your screen flash. Oh, and we have the extra digit at the front of the score, I believe. Oh, yeah. This has happened before. That, we'll get this fixed. I believe the point difference is correct. Add a zero. Add a zero to the end of that score line. No, the point difference is not correct. Oh, it's not? Well, yeah, you added zero to... Yeah. Um, I, have, you had, have you had to deal with this before? Maybe there's I didn't a fix it. Okay. Uh, so SQR trying to dig out. He has to put some weight on that problem, on his way to oh, the solution. Score. Yeah, this should be... He opens it up just in time, knocks down a Tetris. Ethan oh, fires right back. There it is. Well, that's for him. And then this is for him. Boom, Tetris for SQR. I'm just going in and clicking buttons. Seems fine. <laughs> Ethan with a classic Tetris head shake, but he knocks down a Tetris. Really close game right now. I wish I had my necks. We have a neck graphic, and I want and it has necks, and I want to spam my Just neck graphic. Just visualize necks. Yeah, visualize the necks here because they are happening. And we're already 50 lines deep. How did that happen? Uh, time flies when you're having Tetris fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an unfortunate square for Ethan. Just kind of had to chuck it somewhere. Yeah, one little Nino on top of his uh, that little gap right on the right side is actually kind of tough to deal with. But opens it up like a pro and bang, boom, I'm sorry, boom. You can Tetris. bang, you can bang, I can boom. All types are welcome here. <laughs> SQR playing so clean, so consistent. The uh, the Japanese contingent of SQR, Corian and Green Tea arrived earlier than usual. They flew in and got here Wednesday uh, in an attempt to fight the jet lag that has plagued them in the past. And so far, it seems to be working. This is like real reporting you're doing right here. Like this is like you gathered information. I gather. I didn't know such things. I have, my pockets are chock full of information. <laughs> like little scribbled notes. <laughs> with a uh, center dirty Tetris well. If he had gotten a long bar, it would have been the perfect transfer back to the left side, or sorry, the right side. And he waited as long as he could, and you saw the head shake when he had to abandon the plan. SQR is a pretty commanding lead at this point, although he's dealing with some traffic of his own. Yeah, nice long bar, he's gonna enjoy that. Tetris well, and now waiting, and long bar, and boom, Tetris for SQR. So Ethan has these holes to try to clean up. Oh, that is a nice sequence oh, of yeah. pieces to really help him out there. And he would love a long bar right now. Oh, Another no, square. Not. The story of this game is just the square coming right when Ethan has no spot for it. Oh, no. oh and, boy. And this line dependency on the left side is going to be fatal. And, uh, oh. and yeah, there's not going to be anything. Yeah, that. so that's game one to SQR. We'll give him a, a hand and a heart. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, all right, and where did the, there is that. Oh, it's beautiful. And give him one win. Win. As they figure out the next game for yes. the piece sequence. Somehow between the two of us, we have figured this out. Mostly you. I just sat yeah. here and smiled. <laughs> you did it really well. So a nice 57% Tetris rate for SQR. You can see the same drought total average and everything because it's the same piece set. 
All right, we're gonna start the next one. All right. Three, two, one, Tetris! Game two, off and running. Same decisions up until that point. A, a best of three is so brutal. I mean, it can happen in the blink of an eye where, hey, my God, I made it to round zero. And all of a sudden, like 20 minutes later, you're not in the tournament anymore. What's amazing so. about the best of three, and honestly, it can happen with the best of five, it can still come down to one game. And I love the brutality of the single elimination. This is already an incredibly long tournament. And honestly, making it double Elim would be more time than the yeah. Expo Hall is open. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we, we don't need that. All right, so Ethan finally gets the right piece to tuck in there. He's Tetris ready. SQR still waiting on something to build it out, finally gets that. Oh, and Ethan, head shaking, but he opens it up in time. See a little screen look from him. He's got the headphones on and also can't hear the commentators. See, that's like pro strats right there. That's the last thing you want to hear is us droning on into the microphone. <laughs> describing two seconds later what you just did. Yeah. Boom, Tetris for Ethan. Set up again. Boom, Tetris for SQR. And Ethan fires back. Pretty small difference between the two. Just back and forth. <laughs> oh. Obviously, people are pretty hyped on Tetris all over the room right now. Yeah. Something happened. I don't know what. Because of his pressing down, SQR is a little ahead of Ethan. And so he's getting deeper into the droughts before they really start to develop for Ethan. Yeah, SQR being really smart about that line dependency. A lot of players treat that almost like it's a Tetris well and try to keep that open waiting for the long bar, but you can chop that down mm -hmm. piece by piece. Yeah, you kind of use the wrong piece to eventually solve it with enough time. Yeah. And you can see he's practically back, and there it is. Meanwhile, Ethan's got a couple couple holes in his stack he's trying to get down to. Ooh, and that long bar over the right side is just adding four more lines that he's going to have to burn down until he gets Tetris uh, ready. It's so brutal when you have to just keep putting weight on top of the hole in your stack. Finally gets to that next level. Oh, nice. There we go. There's the L. See, and again, SQR into this drought already. There, it starts showing up for Ethan. They do not have the drought counters on their screen. They are seeing just the classic Tetris display on the CRT. They don't have all these extra graphics and information that you guys are seeing. So they might sense that they're in a <laughs> right. drought, they have but no way of really knowing. unless they're literally counting the time between pieces, they don't know how long these droughts are. And it's hard to just glance at an opponent's screen and know that they are in a drought. Yeah. It's about a three Tetris lead here for uh, SQR. Um, and yeah, just well, about five lines ahead, not super far ahead. Mm -hmm. But a few push down points for SQR. And you can tell mm -hmm. that new people, how, how do you know there are push down points? <laughs> the ones digit is incremented. It's the only way mm -hmm. to increment it by yeah. pushing down. If you press down consistently on level 18, it can turn into maybe a few thousand points, which honestly could have been the difference in a few games in the past. So you might hear press down strats from certain players <laughs> being, you know, a factor. But yeah, I think somebody did the calculation. Of course, everyone's going to do the calculation because mm -hmm. there's always somebody doing a calculation. Someone's always going to do yeah. the math. So I think if you press down every piece, maximum press down, it's like 5,000, 5,500 okay. But points, that's so. like ideal, perfect situation, yeah. totally maximized. Yep. All right, so SQR maintaining that lead, still of about 60, 70,000 points. Ethan gets a nice, helpful sequence. Now SQR trying to get to that and unlocks it. And now he's running into this drought. Nice adjustment for that next piece there. And uh, Ethan doesn't know it, but he's about to <laughs> <laughs> run into that. Which is, you know, one of the advantages of playing uh, behind a little bit. Mm -hmm. But of course, you how do you know that? Right. Well, you can't peek over and see that number. Mm -hmm. I mean, the real advantage to not pressing down is just it gives you a little extra time to think about your decisions, maybe adjust your decision based on the next piece. 
And if your opponent tops out, you know what score you need to chase down, and you might have extra time to do it. You know, they, you know, you hear it a lot that that's an advantage, but a lot of players it kind of backfires. It's not an advantage. To be fair, a lot of a lot of competitors will say the most distracting thing that can happen is your opponent topping out. So it's an advantage, but also that could ruin your game. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. Yes. So SQR really opening up a lead here. He's up 145,000 points, four lines approaching away transition. transition. Oh, and Ethan really in a really in a pickle up there. Oh, just piling stuff there, but he unlocks as well. I would love a long bar heading into transition here, and, and gets boom, it. transition Tetris yep. for Ethan, and another, and another Tetris. one. So, but uh, down by about a hundred thousand points. Tetris is here on level nineteen. Worth oh, and SQR 000. just oh, goes no. one space too far. Oh, Run no. into it. Was that a twenty-one drought? Yeah. So, so Ethan so chasing down another hundred thousand points. Almost exactly. Boom, Tetris for Ethan. Yep. This potential elimination game if Ethan cannot pull this out. And now SQR just has to sit and watch. So this is that 21 drought that we just saw SQR kind of fall into. And now we're seeing that it was well beyond a 21. All right, so Ethan about a Tetris and a half. Well, actually, exactly a Tetris and a half. Yeah, so the points scale up as you increase through the levels, even though the drop speed is consistent until level 29. From 19 to 29, it's the same drop speed. But as you go through the levels, you'll start getting more points for every clear, whether it's a single, double, triple, or Tetris. And yeah, within one Tetris now is Ethan. Oh, a slight misdrop. Still low enough to be manageable, though. You don't have to go into panic mode yet, but it's definitely a concern. Okay, timely line. Gets that. Just needs 15,000 points. Oh no. Oh no. He just can't quite. Oh, that's going to do it. And There's nothing Ethan can do here. He's going to pop it. That's it. And so SQR. that's it. We have our first winner of the side station. SQR advances. F, F for F symbols. GG's. Mattia actually got a little extra warm-up time because we couldn't find Svavar for a few minutes. I haven't seen Mattia play before. I've seen a lot of Svavar. He's your yeah. current defending, repeat, European champion. Of course, that is on the PAL version of NES Tetris. And boom, Tetris for Svavar. I feel like Mattia is one of those people that we, he has a screen name. We would know it if we heard it, but we have no idea who it is. It's a little raucous in this room. It's hard for us to speak with the competitors, even though we're kind of next to them. And yeah, the fact that Svavar is in round zero just shows how intense the competition is this year. Yeah. I keep saying it's nuts because my God, round zero. Look at how many top players are in round zero. Mattia is a max out player, I'm reading. And he managed to clean up his board pretty quickly there. So Var ready for a Tetris and bang Tetris. They have the same exact score for like a brief second, which I love. It's always beautiful. Yeah. Simul, simul score? That's not how that works. That's not oh. a thing. Ooh, little extra Mataya. shift there for Mattia followed by another one. Yeah. Oh. But gets the Tetris. Ooh, and then that square. doing a little bit of cleanup work right now. Svavar trying to get Tetris ready. Just never quite the right pieces. And you'll see this from Svavar a lot, that kind of clean up, keep yourself in the game, maybe even burn it down below Tetris level. And I mean, he honestly wasn't even Tetris ready, so keep your stack safe. 
stay in the game. Yeah. You can't get points if you're dead, you know? You know, I think it, in years past it was possible for the higher seeds to sort of kind of feel out the lower seeds, mm -hmm. maybe give up a little pace just to right. see what they were capable of and if you're going to get a low top out. But uh, uh, I don't think you can do that this year. This is a killer bracket start to finish. We have two max out players in round zero right now facing each other. Oh, Mattia with a few awkward drops. He can see those elevated clears though and clean up his board pretty quickly. Swaver so going for the tuck and then using the next piece to get Tetris ready. He saw that there wasn't a long bar coming that he needed to be prepared for. And Mattia is now ready and waiting. I gotta be honest, my attention span is like, I, I, I wanna see, oh my god, something happened over there, I'm gonna look over there. What a crowd! Wow. Gotta love it. You see, neither of these players using headphones. No. I, I feel like I would be. I feel like I wanna tune the I world think out. the sound would still come through. Yeah. So you might as well embrace the chaos. You might have a point there. That's, that's another of the uh, slogans here on Classic Tetris 2, embrace the chaos. <laughs> uh, embrace the slogans, really. <laughs> Indeed, any, any slogan indicating <laughs> disorder and chaos pretty much fits Classic Tetris 2. Mm -hmm. So Svavar with a, about a two Tetris lead right now. Nice and clean. Mataya though, trying to close the gap. You can see some players have a bit of like competition nerves. It's potentially their first time playing in front of people knowing that this many people are watching their game, weighing in on their game, judging their game. Yeah, and some of them like three feet away. <laughs> <laughs> And Svavar just so consistent, keeping it on the right side. See Mattia going for the center. Well, he's ready and he gets it. Party down the middle. Beautiful. And it looks like he's going to stick with it for right now. Both players are DAS players. I can see that peeking over to the left. <laughs> and uh, uh, neither of them pushing down. So it's kind of a very traditional mm -hmm. way of playing Tetris. A little bit old school, you could say. A little old school. I like it. I understand it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, nice adjustment for the square from Mattia there. And it's pretty darn close. I mean, Savar is oh, like... Oh, just the missed tuck from Mattia oh, there with that T. Right. So that's going to cost him a little pace. You know, he was catching up to Savar, but that's going to slow yeah, down a bit Yeah, he's closing more. the gap. Kind of an up and down game from Mattia. You see, like, he kind of settles into a rhythm and then just has an awkward shift and loses it again. So back within about a Tetris, a little bit over. Yeah, still a pretty close game. Svavar has been playing pretty conservatively, not taking a ton of risks. It's also tricky for some of these more veteran players that have been competing for longer. There are these new players, they might not know how they play. So it's a bit of a feeling out period. So both players trying to set their stacks up for the transition. Uh, so far with a great looking Tetris well with a double well over the top, exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. And Mattia with a little bit more of a complicated situation going into transition. Yeah, a little, little cheesy board there. Svavar transitions with a 467. It's a strong pace, especially in tournament. And I feel like he had a drought kind of approaching the transition and now yeah. another one yeah. right and after it. Mattia and that's what's now. taking down Mattia and so game one good. for Svavar. Give that man his heart. It's always tough if you don't get the long bars before and after the transition to stay in it. Especially with that speed increase. That's true. What you just said was a true statement. Thank you. Yeah, that was very good. I try not to lie yeah. about Tetris because nice. someone will catch me. That's true. I like the old, you know, the, to determine the seed. There's no, like, 
the electronic gizmo that randomizes what pe it's a guy with like a D8 yeah. die. It's actually it. pretty nice the way they go through the rounds with it to guarantee that people don't get repeat games. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, for as old school with the with the dice. It's still very uh, clever. <laughs> So yeah, Svavar from Iceland, but currently living in Copenhagen. So he's extra, extra international. <laughs> I feel like that's everybody in Europe, though. It's like, well, I lived for, in Hungary for I'm a few from, years. but then I went to, and uh, then now yeah, I live in. That's every single European I've ever met in my entire life. Is that life. how we are with, like, states? <laughs> yeah. In three, two, one, Tetris! Game two of Svavar and Mataya. You see very different placements of the opening pieces from these players. Sometimes you see the exact same moves, and sometimes it immediately looks like different boards. They both get set up, and boom, pretty much simultetris. So both able to convert that first long bar. And then you'll see Mattia take the lead. He just got set up a little bit more efficiently for that next one. Right, so Matai with a little line dependency there, but he gets the line. He's low. Oh, no. fires back. He does not use the line to fill in that line dependency, and then he ends up covering he building it with the block. a Tetris there? Trying to go maybe a bit more aggressive in this match. We saw him go to the center wall in the first game. That was an interesting series of placements, but he wasn't that far behind Svavar, so I, I'm wondering what uh, is motivating that. Or maybe there just are, didn't see it. There are some players that might feel more comfortable on 18 speed and might be the game plan could be to play more aggressively here and hope that the transition kind of hangs on to their lead. So Svavar gets set up. Mataya gets the right piece to tuck in there. That was helpful. Ooh, interesting sequence. Oh, it, oh no. He um, just had the he had the, the Z over a bit too far, brought it back, but then wasn't ready for the next piece. He might be able to save this. If he gets, that's a great piece. Oh god, but then he has to get Can he get another Oh the dig? Wow. Can he dig this situation back down? These clutch decisions. When you're up at the top of the screen, you have so little time to make a decision yeah. and make it work. So I think he's out of the danger zone now. He just needs one L or J, and there it is. And he's, he's going to clear down almost all the way. That one got my bottom. heart racing. I know. <laughs> but what you saw is, you know, there's a lot of these kind of newer strats, right? You know, they're obviously... Boom! Dirty Tetris! Having a, uh, you know, burn chamber over your Tetris well is mm -hmm. one thing. Being able to hyper-tap the piece to the left is another burn chamber. But mm -hmm. what a lot of the new style is these kind of really elaborate uh Tuck setups, right. like nested tuck kind setups. Kind of overhangs, you can slide yeah. pieces underneath. But then planning like four or five overhangs ahead. Yeah. yeah, you can you can end up with a bit of a totem pole and mm -hmm. you're trying to slide all these pieces in there. It can get a little too complicated. So Mataya maintaining the lead for a little bit, but Svavar takes it back. Ooh. Unfortunate piece there for Mataya. Takes a few burns away from him. So Svavar maintaining that one Tetris lead. Now, you saw in Europe, right? People love neck and neck, but here nobody's shouting neck and neck. There's not right yet. Respectful. Give it time. Probably not a lot of alcohol in this building either. So, yes. yeah. Give it time. <laughs> All right, so back and forth. He takes it back. You can see Svavar glance over every once in a while, kind of get a, a score check. There are more aggressive ways to build so that you're not burning a line to get Tetris ready. I think Svavar's thought is that at this level, he might not need to do that and play that aggressively and risk that much. See a bit of a drought here comes out of it with a Tetris, that always feels good. Chris's Tetris ready, Stacy's Tetris ready. And now you see Mattia trying to unlock that left side. Yeah. But still within half a Tetris of Svavar. So 
This is where Svalbard could really make a difference. Those moments, those moments when Mattia is kind of trying to open something up. Oh, teaspoon? Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to resist, but I would fail. Oh no, just misdropped the L right there. Level 28 for both of them. Kill the kill screen! Svalbard with another screen look, checking scores. Oh no! Oh no! Holy! Too hype, guys. Too hype. It's going to game three on the main stage, whatever that means for you guys. And here, Svavar opening up. A 70,000 point lead. Mattia knocks down a dirty Tetris. And set up for another one. And there it is. And Tetris transition. Is that was, I think, a 380,000 point transition for Mattia. He's working with some, some holes at the bottom of his stack there, trying to dig down to it. He's still low, and he's got material on the left already, so he should be in good shape. Not sure if he was going for the spin there. Yeah, definitely some interesting place of, uh, placements for Mattia. It's always fun pieces. seeing a, a player that's new to you and you have no idea what their play yeah. style is yet. Exactly. And you realize there are so many different ways to play this game. Svalbar opening up a six digit lead now, 100,000 point lead. Mattia with a nice tuck. Christian. Do, do they know Main Street is down? Yeah, probably not. Okay. Oh, Tetris competition. Already. Swalwell retains that lead and takes the game. GG's to these players. Great work. So on the left we have Mark, your German qualifying winner. He got the flight and hotel covered because of his wow. victory in Germany. It's one of the many international qualifiers that they were able to add to the schedule last year. So great to see the community grow. I barely got lunch covered. So I don't like, yeah, cover anything. Man. People like Mark really putting the W in the CTWC <laughs> in a way that is great. Yeah, no doubt. And, and then uh, we have David, who has appeared in the CTWC before. Mm -hmm. And you might know him online as DivCast, so always a, uh, a participant in online tournaments. So you'll see him throughout, sprinkle throughout Twitch streams, taking part in both so my tournament that I do, you might have heard of, and but there are also like these in, this culture of impromptu 1v1 streams that are happening mm -hmm. that he takes part in as well. Impromptu battles. So Mark dealing with a little bit of traffic, trying to uncover as well and get Tetris ready. David in nice shape right now, able to skim that square, and then he has to take himself out of Tetris contention as they are both running into this drought right now. Let's see how deep this goes. Still going in the mid 20s now. You see David able to navigate it a bit better than Mark was, but they both open up in time and boom, simul Tetris. So nice. Maybe about a Tetris ahead, uh, but both players super clean. Another Tetris here for Dave. Mark is a hyper tapper. Uh, he has an interesting grip. He uses his knee to kind of wedge the controller in place. His see if hand we can goes get some over of that it. Into the, there we go. We'll get some of that. <laughs> some of it. Some of it. Yeah, you see some players use a table, some players use their lap. He uses his knee, so he crosses his legs a certain way and kind of mm -hmm. uses his knee as the frame. 
Dave, on the other hand, just holds it like a controller. Holds it like a controller. Yeah, just holds like it like a normal... Like if you pick up a controller, yeah, that's how you hold it. Here's the controller. <laughs> like it didn't occur to him to pick it up in some odd, elaborate way, but... Yeah, Dave did not like his left side ops to just burn it down, start over, build up better. And boom Tetris for Mark, closes the gap. Now only one Tetris difference between these two players. Mark has quite the double wide well, starts to build up for a Tetris. There we go. Of course, now he's in another drought. Yeah, both of them are. Oh, and David just nowhere for that square. Yeah. That was risky, but he got the square. And there it is for Dave. And maintains the lead about a little over a Tetris. Yeah, Mark. <laughs> Mark got his own square that he had no space for. It seems like a harmless piece until you realize you need a flat area to put it. And you realize how often your board is incredibly jagged. <laughs> so yeah, David playing so clean right now. He's held on to this lead. Numerous droughts in this game, early droughts already. Yeah, it's gonna be tough oh to gosh. burn on and the right And just nothing side. to throw over yeah, there, no. he tops out. So he tops out at 239, Mark needs to get to just about 240. But you can see, yeah, Dave just kind of holding out a few pieces too long, waiting for that Right long after bar. I said his stack looked great. Yeah, yeah he had that double, uh, that uh, two, uh, two Mino mm -hmm. deep uh, gap there that was going to prevent him from burning yeah. it, so he really kind of had to You can't to put anything right. to the right because it's just going to block that. Yep, exactly. So, so Mark's uh, almost there. Sets up and Tetris, and Tetris. that's game one for Mark. I haven't forgotten a single heart on my own stream. There, never reply the hearts, ever. Died again? Yeah. Shoot. I'm assuming they know that. I don't know. So we have Mark making faces at his game right now. <laughs> Not too pleased <laughs> with what developed <laughs> that opening sequence. <laughs> but Dave, on the other hand, same pieces and a great looking board here. So I mean, just... the game essentially started with a drought. That's now wow. into the 30s. Yeah, Dave finally knocks down his first Tetris. And gets another one soon after, opens up a two Tetris lead. All right, the mainstream is back. Yeah. Well, look at that. I'm assuming there must be just somebody whose job is to look at <laughs> just that one specific mm -hmm. location in OBS. All right, the largest lead we've seen so far, obviously it's still very early. Mark already cutting into it a bit. Oh, it's a tough left side for David, and he knows it. Kind of forced into that line dependency now. Ay, ay, ay. Chopping it down, not waiting for a, a, a long bar, and keeping it open. God, and another drought right away. When it's like a drought followed by a drought, you just don't have any oh, time no. to breathe, and oh, that's no, okay. it. So Dave tops out at 99,000. Mark needs to get to about 100,000. And all Dave can do is, is sit, sit and, and wait. wait. Exactly. That was a nice moment. <laughs> we planned that. We did. We have a whole, <laughs> we have all a whole the, routine. All the ad libs are written out in advance. Yeah. This is and good. almost, not yet, not yet, no, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> Keep playing. He don't listen to the crowd. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to the crowd. Someone in the crowd told Mark he had it. He is not yet there. But that triple. That will, will do it. And there it is. And Mark advances into the main bracket.